My name is Jerry Peacock, and me and my family have lived in Baker for approximately 40 years. But we've been in Baker County my whole career, which now spans about 45 years in education. We had the good fortune of starting in Huntington, where I spent five years as a classroom teacher and a coach in three different sports, head coach in basketball, football, and track. Had an opportunity to come to Baker, Baker High School. I still have a problem calling it Baker City, but uh, came to Baker City in 1983. And I had the opportunity to become the assistant principal at Baker High School, where I did that for a couple of years, two years, and had a better opportunity to become principal of Brooklyn Elementary School, where I was principal for seven years. After that, I had the opportunity, or even a better, great opportunity yet, to become principal of Baker High School, and was in that role from 1992 to 2014. I then had an opportunity to become the director of Baker Technical Institute, uh, which is attached to the high school and was, was gave students an opportunity to delve into the career and technical education occupations and careers that might exist. And I did that for three years. And like many people, I thought it was enough time to retire. So I am the Career Technical Education Regional Coordinator for the Mount Huri SD and really, really like the possibility of where that can help young people make good career exploration decisions. I had a chemistry teacher who came up to me one day and, and asked me where I was going to go to school. Where was I, where was I going to go to college? And I looked at him and I said, sir, I'm not going to college. We can't afford that. And he says, well, yeah, you are. Long story short, he made me get up and go talk to the guidance counselor. And the guidance counselor asked me what I was doing there. And I said, well, Mr. Gaskin sent me to talk to you about going to college. And she says, well, where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? I said, ma'am, Five minutes ago, I didn't know I was going to college, so I have no idea. And she says, well, if Mr. Gaskin sent you, he must think you've got something to offer. And he was uh, an excellent teacher and a difficult teacher, but for some reason, chemistry made good sense. And so she said, well, maybe you ought to be a pharmacist. And I thought, well, that sounds good. Let's do that. And that's how my career started in education. So I went to Auburn University in the pre-pharmacy program and uh, thought that's what I was going to do. And then when I had to declare, like most kids, that's not really what I wanted to do. Yeah, but I was so intrigued by the health and the chemistry and the anatomy and the physiology that I thought, I think I'll go into health. And so I graduated with a degree in health and chemistry. And as luck would have it, Part of my health requirement was I had to spend part of my senior year in a public health practicum and part in a public education teaching practicum. I never, ever would have guessed or suspected that I would have become a teacher. Uh, that was something that was so far removed from my background and, and my interest because I didn't want to speak in front of people. I ended up having to do it and found out absolutely loved it. I love the opportunity to work with young people, have an impact, have an influence, help them grow in ways that I never even thought possible. And so I decided I would pursue education at that point. I came cross country and my Volkswagen Carmen Ghia loaded to the hilt with everything I owned after I got accepted into Oregon State to get uh, as a TA, as a teaching assistant, I came across country for an experience and got my master's in health education from Oregon State. And so married an Oregonian and we know how that goes. She not going south. So here I am after all these years, 
I'm still out here in the Northwest and I love every bit of it. It was the best decision we made. So fourth grade, I had Peggy Mason as my teacher and she allowed me to work ahead in the math workbook uh, and do as much as I could do and achieve what I could achieve. And I remember after having all the negative experiences, the first grade, second grade, third's okay. I remember her coming up, putting her arm around me and saying, you're so smart. Not many people told me that since I'd like to point out, but, but she, uh, that was pivotal to me because it was like, wow, I do have the confidence. I can develop the confidence to uh, achieve and to be better. And I think that that those are the kind of things you remember when you're working with young people. And, and it's helped me in education to develop that relationship because I still look back, obviously, years later and think Peggy Mason walked on water. And I think it's important that we develop effective relationships with kids in order to make them believe they can do something uh, as opposed to what they telling them what they can't do. And so to me, what's always guided me is the Peggy Mason piece is uh, to help provide kids with the confidence to be good what they want to be, what they want to do. Cool. Well, to begin with, you never plan a day because it never goes according to plan. So a typical day when I was principal, I would try to be in my office by six o'clock in the morning, 5.45, six o'clock. And I typically wouldn't leave until six o'clock in the afternoon, in the evening, I guess that's afternoon. Um, unless we had, of course, basketball season hit, and then I wouldn't leave until 10 o'clock home game night. So long hours, long days, uh, many times, I didn't plan some of my some of my days. Most of my days were planned. A very organized person, but because I knew that you dealt with things as they came up, so you're interacting with kids. So my day uh, was to get there early and and try to get something done, get the paperwork done before kids and teachers came in because I always had an open door policy and folks would come in and out. Kids knew where the candy was and the drawer and file cabinet and they just walked in like they owned the joint or something I don't know what it was um, and so I to me it was important to be visible out in the hallways and and I served lunch every day because I felt it was important to see kids in that environment and I also um, wanted to make sure I was out calling kids by name because I, I think it's important for young people to know that somebody cares enough to call them by their name and make them feel like they belong there in school. Uh, so there, there are a lot of mundane things in education, particularly from an administrative role, uh, dealing with parents or, or kids or athletic issues or whatever the case might be, teacher observation, teacher evaluation, school improvement, continuous improvement plans, uh, all of those things. But I think the main, what I would tell you, my main thing was trying to be available, trying to be visible. Uh, develop relationships, create relevance in the school, and support rigor. I think the greatest challenge is trying to create a collective vision for a school. And and where do we want to listen to voice? And where do we want to go as, as a school? What do we want our students to look like when they, they enter as freshmen and leave as seniors? What do we want for them? Is what do we want that to be and what are we going to do as educators to support that and maybe even change some of the things we're currently doing. Go back to the part I mentioned about relevance. So the biggest challenge is how do we create relevance in education? Education hasn't evolved or changed much over the last 150 years if you stop and think about it. Our customer has. In the customer we have today the Gen Z and, and the future alphas, not the same customer. So the biggest challenge that I look at in, is creating relevance, particularly when you see what technology has done to impact education. And so the, the challenge is how do we use technology effectively 
to support educational opportunities for our kids because there's no such thing as Encyclopedia Britannica anymore, World Book, all of that. It's right here in your hand. But more importantly, young people are asking the question, what's in it for me? More than ever. And, and, the, and we, we've seen that with different generations. I've had the opportunity to work with four different generations. Because when I started, I was in Baby Boomer. I was a Baby Boomer working with Baby Boomers. And then, of course, you went to X and then Y, and now we're in Z. And so there's a, con there's a considerable difference. So the, the challenge is how do we create relevance in education to keep our young people attached and see the value in it and what's in it for them. And they don't say that in a negative way. We just have to recognize that it's a, a change. So, so the challenge has always been, what do we do to make it valuable for young people? Well, the, the one thing that you look at in education, we've done it forever and ever and ever, is that we ask young people, we ask, I don't care what age they are, what do you want to be when you grow up? Most of the answers centered around what you're exposed to and what you think you're interested in. Well, in Eastern Oregon, in, in Baker City, and in smaller communities, you're, you're exposed to much less than what you would be in other areas. That's not to dispel any of the relevance of that, but, it, but it's a relevancy. But I think that exposure gap is huge. And so most people don't, young people don't know what they're excited about or what they could be excited about or what they even have the ability to do. So they'll go to college and they'll come in to see me after the first freshman year and I say, well, what do you think you want to do now? And they'll, they'll tell me something they want to become as a result of taking a class. That's, that's not the way you determine what your career is going to be. And so I think that what's really driving me and what motivates me in my transition from my role in Baker to what I'm doing currently is I'm working with schools on how to work with aptitudes in students, not just interests. And that's exciting <clears throat> to me because aptitude's what you're born with. That's, what, that's what's in here. That's what the armed forces has figured out a long time ago, is that that's why they give the ASVAB, to determine what you can do for them. Not because you're interested, because you have the ability. And so that's, that transition has been really a lot of fun. What motivates me? Mm -hmm. Know your audience. Mm -hmm. Know your audience. Be innovative and creative. And, and understand that you have a role to help create a competitive advantage for young people. And that competitive advantage is be a part of robust academic knowledge. Help them learn those types of things that they need to know that are relevant. Number two, learn, help kids learn professional skills. Some people call them soft skills. Uh, employability skills, whatever you want to do, but we need to under, they need to know that. And then I think the last thing is their kids need to understand what technical skills are. So if they want to go into a particular career, they need to begin to develop some of those technical skills. I think the other thing, and here's a thing that really concerns me in education, and I've seen it really evolve, unfortunately, in the last several years. We need to get back to young people learning what accountability is all about. Mm -hmm. We need to get a, we, we need to emphasize to our parents that they can't continue to hover and not allow young people to be responsible and accountable for their own actions. I'm always reminded of a, a that line in a Bob Seger song that says basically I, I wish I didn't now didn't know now what I didn't know then you know and, and um, I think we all look back and say gosh I wish I'd have done something differently there or, or whatever and, and I think that's human nature I'm not I'm not sure I'd change a lot quite frankly I, I I've enjoyed there were very 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 few days. I could probably count them on one hand that I didn't look forward to getting up going to work. 
I loved what I did and I love what I do currently. Uh, if you don't have passion for what you do, don't do it. Find something else you have passion for. And so I don't have a lot of regrets or, or I don't look back and think, gosh, I wish I'd have gone here or gone there or done this or done that. Uh, do I wish I'd gone into the Coast Guard when I was thinking about that as a senior in, in high school? Uh, no. No, because I'd like to think that I've had an impact on a few few folk. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and that that's more valuable to me than than anything else I could have done. It's really difficult when you're investing in young people and you're investing in teachers to see immediate results. Because one of the things I used to tell kids is that you better make the most important decisions of your life right now while you know everything. Yeah, because you know, when you tell a young person something, their response typically is, I know, I know. Well, if you know so much, why am I talking to you? And, and I think that it's fun to see that evolution, that change. You're investing in them and you're telling them and they're telling you they know, they don't know. And, and they're absorbing some of that. And so I, I think that, that you measure success by knowing that that short-term investment that you have in them is going to result in long-term gains. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the measure of success. I hope my legacy will be that I tried to provide an environment for young people in education where they felt welcome, where they felt known, somebody knew who they were. And, and that they somebody cared about them being successful. One of the things we used to talk about at Baker High School a lot, all my freshmen would come in and we'd have a day with them and my speech was basically the same every year and it centered around being classy, having class. I, I wanted my kids to understand that Baker High School, we were, we were about class. And it didn't matter if other schools when came in to compete and they weren't very sportsmanlike. Uh, I expected class from my kids, and, and they knew that. And so if I asked them, what do I expect from you? That was typically what they would do on oh, class. And, and so I think that those are the types of things that you hope kids remember. How to be classy, how to conduct yourself responsibly, respectfully. Uh, be accountable, all of those things. Show some character when people aren't watching. Demonstrate that, and I think that's the, the that's the legacy. Is what's it like to have class? <laughs>